Good morning, everyone. I'd like to call this Tampa City Council meeting to order. At this time, I yield to Councilmember Vieira for today's invocation. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. It's my great pleasure to welcome our friend, uh, Pastor Erica Allen with Horizon Church, a United Methodist congregation in Tampa. Uh, I was telling Pastor Allen that I'm Catholic, but if I was Protestant, I'd probably be a Methodist, so there you go. Uh, their church purchased Pin Pinarama Bowling Alley in South Tampa and are renovating the bowling alley to include rooms for children's ministries and accommodations for those with special needs and intellectual disabilities. This ministry also works to provide mentorships and positive adult support to children at Sheremonte Elementary who are entering the transition between elementary and middle school. The program has helped to improve attendance, decrease behavioral referrals, and make a positive impact on the community. Please help me welcome uh, Pastor Allen of Ho Horizon Church and stand if you would for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Gracious God, thank you for the opportunity each of us had this morning to wake up in the greatest city in the world. We ask you to bless Tampa. Make us a bright light to other cities. Grant us innovation to address complex issues. Grant us joy in the work. Grant us economic growth and prosperity. Grant Tampa's people compassion and a desire to serve all of our friends, especially the least of these. As schools begin a new school year, we pray for our children. Keep them safe and healthy. Give them curiosity and wonder and prepare them to lead Tampa into a hopeful and bright future. Remind us all of the core truth that all children have the ability to learn and grow and give us opportunities to create space where all children can thrive. We pray for teachers, give them strength, energy, and tenacity Help them to know how valued and important they are. We pray for bus drivers and administrators and school leaders. God, above all, we ask you to protect our children each and every day. We pray for all of the public servants, some of whom are standing among us today. Thank you for TPD, firefighters, etc., those who will work in the heat to serve and love the people of Tampa today. Thank you for their hearts. Protect their bodies, God. We pray for those experiencing homelessness and who for various reasons find it difficult to find a cool place for respite today. Protect them too, God. Give us innovation for the complex and often heartbreaking issue of affordable housing. Give us eyes to see and hands to work toward a more just and compassionate city. Give us creative solutions and boldness to work for this city, God. Thank you for the business leaders, some of whom are in this room today. Thank you for those who love this city more than anything and are committed to see her thriving. Bless them and grant them hearts for your people. And God, finally, I lift up these city council leaders, give them wisdom to make sound decisions, grant them courage for bold leadership, give them ears and strength to hear the people and give them energy and passion to create solutions. God bless us all with the opportunity for rest and deep breaths to restore our strength and energy. Give us friends and community who are supportive. And above all, God, we ask you to bless this beautiful city. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Carlson? Here. Pertet? Here. Mendenis? Here. Henderson? Present. Sierra? Here. Miranda? Here. And Manitoba? Here. We have a fiscal call. All right, at this time, may I have a motion to adopt the minutes from the August 3rd uh, meeting as well as the August 17th meeting? Second. Mm -hmm. Councilman Miranda with a motion and a second from Councilman Vieira. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Let's go through the agenda real quick. Um, we have a, a request to continue item number one, the ATU Employee of the Month, to October 5th uh, due to a uh, scheduling so conflict. Moved. We okay. have a motion to continue item number one and replace it with a special guest today. Item from, uh, motion from Councilman Vieira, second Councilman Miranda, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We also have a walk-on request from Councilmember Miranda for the Mayor's Hispanic Heritage Committee to be heard right after item number four. Councilman Miranda, would you like to make that? Motion? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion bring the 
what you just said regarding the Hispanic uh, operation for City of Tampa right after item number three. Second. We have a motion from Councilman Moran and second from Councilman Carlson. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we have a memo from Councilwoman Hertak to pull items number 17 and 61, both for discussion under staff reports. Uh, Ma'am, may I have a motion? Uh, yes, um, make a motion to pull those, please. Second. All right, we have a motion from Councilwoman Hertek, second from Councilmember Vieira. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we uh, have a request from uh, Ms. Susan Johnson Velez, our attorney, to speak during the administrative update. And once that comes up, uh, she will be speaking on that. And before we uh, ask for an approval of the agenda and the addendum, let's go through the staff reports. We will have an administrative update as discussed. Item number 110, it's a $29 million contract, I would say yes. Item number 111 is 3.9 million. Item number 112 is 7.6 million, so we would have Brad Baird for all those. Item 113 is 4.2 million. Uh, item 114 is 16 million, so Brad Baird for all those which are um, 110 through 114. Second. All right, uh, we don't need a, a motion okay. for, for that, but um, let's see. For TPD on body-worn cameras, we have a written report. Would we like the chief to be uh, here for that? Anybody? No? All right, chief, we're good with the written report. We'll receive and follow that. Um, we have a item number 116 regarding returning citizens. If I may. Uh, yes, sir, I actually want to pull that, uh, and uh, we have this coming back to us in November with a program that the city is working on, the county for returning citizens, job training, and apprenticeship. So this uh, um, can be reported on at that time. I, I, it's uh, probably more efficient and whatnot, so just take it off if I may. All right. So uh, in lieu of the November report. Okay, so 116, we won't take up. We'll talk about it in November. Mr. Right. Chair. Yes, sir. J just in case anybody's watching about body cameras, um, the report that Chief provided is very thorough, and, and I just want to say on, on the record I appreciate him doing it. Anybody who's interested in the update on that um, and the transparency connected to it, please read that document. Thank you. All right. Item number 117, Councilman. Yes, ma'am. On item number 116, can we get a motion to remove it from the agenda? Second. We have a motion to uh, remove from Councilman Vieira, second from Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. In addition, do you want this to be another annual report or do you want to take it off altogether? You know, that's a good question. Let's keep it as an annual report since it's next August. You never know. Mm -hmm. All right. Item number 117, this is Councilman Carlson's motion. Uh, Mr. B Day transmitted a written report. Would you like him present for that? Yes, please. All right, 117, we'll have Mr. B Day present. Item number 118 regarding the Jackson House, yes. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, um, items um, number 119, one, I'm sorry, 119, yes, we have a PowerPoint presentation, so we'll have that person present. Item number 120 is a. Um, is from Justin Vasky regarding a motion by Councilman Vieira. There's a draft ordinance. Yes, sir. Yeah, we can hear on that. Okay, yeah. item 120. Item 121 is just the uh, the calendar tentatively from now till July 25th. Uh, yes, sir. You, I'll make the motion on 122 on. Oh, okay. I, I'd like to make a motion to move um, to continue items 122, 123, and 124 to October to 5th. October and second. 125 to October 5th at the request of um, All right. We have a motion from Council Member Carlson, second from Council Member Clendenin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. I, uh, one, did you mention 125? Yeah, and at 125. Um, but just I would ask my colleagues, please um, read these. These are important things that have tied, been tied to issues we've had in the past. So um, when it comes okay. up, we'll talk about it. Thank you. All right. Item number 126, we have a, a memo from the Chief of Police requesting that the signing be continued to October 19, 2023. May I have a motion? So moved. Motion from Council Member Clendenin, Senator Council Member Moran. All in favor? Aye. 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 That covers the agenda. May I have a motion to approve the agenda and the addendum? Second. Motion from Council Member Vieira, second from Council Member Henderson. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, now in place of item number one, we have a special guest, and we have many other special guests today. We have Mayor Castor, we have Chief Burko, we have Chief Delgado, and we have our state attorney, Susie Lopez, in the back. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mayor, if you'd like to do the honors, go ahead. All right, Council, uh, good morning. Good morning. It good morning. is a, an honor to be here with Chief Lee Burko and also representatives from uh, Visit Tampa Bay, Sherry Brown, more affectionately known as Downtown Sherry Brown. Uh, <laughs> to uh, introduce to you, which I know the majority of you know, uh, the esteemed Dr. Zernona Clayton. And it is so, so exciting to have her in our community. As many of you know, this will be the fourth year that she has come down to celebrate her birthday here in Tampa. 
Uh, she is 93 years young. Uh, made me feel bad about complaining about some aches and pains at 63 uh, to see her in action. Many of you know that she is a civil rights icon uh, working in the 1960s in Atlanta with Dr. Martin Luther King, good friend of his wife, Coretta Scott King, and has done so much uh, to advance civil rights in our community. Uh, we just had a conversation about 30 minutes worth that was nothing short of, a, of, of amazing. Uh, to hear her stories and to go back to those values that we all know, but to understand it through her experiences and what she has accomplished over the years is, is truly remarkable. And I know that council has a lot of work to do on behalf of, of our residents in our city, but if you had the entire day to, to listen to the good doctor, I think every moment would be well worth it. And I think that the, the point that I brought away that was the most important is her underscoring the fact that our similarities will always, always outweigh our differences. And that if we work together, we can accomplish anything, not only here in Tampa, but throughout the nation and the world. So it's my honor to welcome her and you just take it away, doctor. Well, thank you very much. Um, Dr. King believed strongly that we can and must live together. He couldn't understand why we couldn't. My mind went back on one of his lessons one day when I was a student in college. Uh, my sister and I and our two boyfriends went out <laughs> on a date. When the evening was over, we decided we want to top it off with a hamburger. Um, we all had money to afford a hamburger. And after a great evening, we walked into the hamburger shop store. Walked into a man who was standing at the counter with a butcher knife that looked this long. And he said to us, if you niggas don't get out of this place, I will cut all your heads off because you know you don't belong here. A pain that I still feel when I talk about it. You don't belong here. We, did, we had money to afford a hamburger, but I resolved that night, this is long before I met Dr. King, that I wanted to be sure that everything I did would convince my right to be here. I've spent my life trying to do that. Then after meeting Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., everything I thought ended up being strengthened with his leadership. He could not understand why we could not all live together, brothers and sisters, in this great land. And I'm with him. I don't understand it either. But coming here has strengthened the will to keep doing it, keep working it, don't give up. And this is my fourth trip, as the mayor said. Um, I lied so many years about my birthday <laughs> that I really forgot how old I was. And I took 31 as my year. Uh, and I stayed 31 for about 50 years. <laughs> but now, I'm ready now to come face the truth. Uh, now, my posse that's visiting with me, they tell me that I'm 90, uh, but it's really 93 uh, I'm going to be. But I want to spend it here uh, because I'm seeing the picture that Dr. King helped to paint all the time. I've seen diversity unlike many places. 
I just felt uncomfortable that I was escorted by the police. Uh, I've been with the police ever since I came over here this morning, and I thought, I hope they'll turn me loose here in a few minutes. <laughs> I'm in my heart. In my heart, I'm still believing that I belong here. I've worked at proving that I can fit here. This is home for me. And meeting this wonderful mayor, I mean, I have now a new excitement about facing this 31-year birthday again. <laughs> <laughs> I look to council, office holders. Your city is run by diversity, the picture that Dr. King would love to see. I wish he were here today to see you. You are a beautiful picture. I love saying it. My resolve is strengthened because I don't give up. But I've spent all these years trying to prove my worth and my value. And I think I've got it. You're helping to give me the strength to continue working so that everybody looks like you. The picture of what we ought to be. Mm -hmm. You are proven we can be it. And I'm reminded of the woman who went to the paint, uh, uh, pet store. At the beginning of the door, at the beginning of the store, there was a cage with a parrot in it. When she walked in, the parrot said to her, you're ugly. Well, she was chagrined by that. And she said to the owner, your bird just embarrassed me, said I was ugly. He said, oh, miss, don't worry about that. I'll change that bird. And she reached in the cage and got the bird and walked out. And he said, because I don't want to lose you as a customer. She came back a second time, and the bird said, you're ugly. And she said to the owner, I thought you took care of this bird. He said, I'm ugly again. And he said, oh, miss, please don't leave me. And he grabbed the parrot, went out, and then came back and said, everything is taken care of now. You can come back at any time. She came back again. When she walked in the door, the parrot looked at her and said, you know. <laughs> So I want you to know that I, I now know that you're okay here in Tampa. I'm going to come back again, and thanks for this opportunity to meet all of you today. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, Chair. Good morning, Dr. Clayton. Welcome back to Tampa. I am so excited and honored to be in your presence in this chamber saying everything that you said. You are part of the reason why I am standing and sitting in this chamber because of women like you and all of the work that you did towards civil rights. And if the chair doesn't mind, because of your dedication to the community, your dedication to humanity, um, being a member of an HBCU and Divine Nine family, I would love to provide you with accommodation because of who you are and what you've done, not only for um, the citizens of the world, but for yourself as a woman. We got a thank motion. You we have a second. Second, thank Councilman you. Thank Rand, you. all in favor? Thank you. Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Of course, to be given to you at a later date. The next birthday. The next, yes. <laughs> the next 31st birthday. <laughs> the next 31st birthday. Yeah. Thank you for being here. It's such an honor to have you here with us. I was told, uh, the other day that you would be here so we wanted to accommodate to make sure that that we heard your voice because you you are a, a very important a very highly respected individual a legend a living legend working side by side with dr king with the with the king family and you know before i go to the other council members i want to thank you for your positive message this morning you know why can't we get along why can't we live together it's hubris it's ego it's pride it's all these things that that negate all the positivity in our in our lives 
because it should be so simple to just get along. And you've witnessed it firsthand, you know, the pains, the struggles in your life growing up. But as you, as you finish with, with, with your story, how, you know, the, how beautiful, the diversity, the diversity in the city. So I want to thank you for, for starting this day, you know, on a positive note and, and sharing your light and your energy with us. Thank you very much. Councilman Vieira. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you, Mayor, for uh, bringing this wonderful, amazing woman here. It's, it's such an honor to have you here, ma'am. And um, I, I echo the words that Councilwoman Henderson and Chairman Maniscalco said. And, you know, you coming from Atlanta, the name that uh, a city of so many great titans and civil rights, not just Reverend King, but names that every good American should know people like John Lewis, uh, people like Hosea Williams, uh, uh, so many different people, uh, Mayor Andrew Young, uh, Reverend Joseph Lowry, uh, so many just amazing individuals who mean so much to the American journey. And, and your words are more important than ever today. Uh, very, very important today when I feel that we, you know, often turn our back on, on diversity and different issues that Reverend King and other good, great leaders of the time like Bobby Kennedy and others champion. That dream is still alive today. And because of people like you, we remember it. So thank you so much, ma'am, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman thank Miranda. You. Thank you very much. Again, it's a pleasure to have you here. But more invigorating than anything you said is that the lifespan that you've gone through, what your eyes have seen and what you noticed when you were a little child, and now you're just a young 93. And uh, I look at you not only as a person who's done things historically, but for a person who takes one step at a time and marches forward, doesn't have to look left, doesn't have to look right, because you have created an own, your own idea of what's right and wrong. And you learn that from hanging around with who you were with. You learn that from your family members. You learn that from the people around you where you lived. And I think society today is missing a lot of conversation with your own neighbors. More likely now in America, if you ask somebody what's your neighbor's name to your left and to your right, they wouldn't know. And in your days and my days, because I'm only 10 years younger than you, maybe a little bit older. <laughs> I, I, I like the way you present yourself because you end it with humor. And humor is a salvation thought of soiling the mind and making you understand what it's life about. There's a lot more things than just bad things happening every day in every city in the world. So congratulations for who you are, what you are, and what you stand for. Appreciate it very much. Thank you so much. Member Carlson. Thank you so much for, for coming here today and coming before us and to the public. Um, uh, thank you for inspiring us and reminding us of the, of the great stories of the civil rights movement. Unfortunately, as you know, the struggle still continues and we're all in it every day. There are a lot of um, local civil rights leaders sitting behind you and, and you know, everybody struggles every day to continue to find that equality that uh, Dr. Martin Luther King and, and you and others have uh, talked about too many years ago. <laughs> and uh, so we'll continue working toward that. Um, my, just so you know, my kids also, uh, Councilman Riera's kids, others have grown up um, going to places like Ebenezer Baptist Church and the Civil Rights Museum and others. And we, we're trying to remind the next generation. And I just have to tell you a quick story. We, I took my kids to Atlanta last year and we went on a Marvel movie tour, the, the comic strip, comic uh, movie tour. And uh, we went to, we were talking about the movie Black Panther. And we went to a parking lot where in the movie there were some kids playing basketball and they were looking up at an apartment complex. And uh, the, the, the movie guide was telling us about how Ryan Coogler, the, the director, was inspired by Dr. Martin Luther King. And he said, turn around. And when we <coughs> turned around, um, in the movie, the, the, the video just pans around and you can see the background with the, the kids playing basketball. But when we turned around, it was the original Ebenezer Baptist Church. And we all got chills thinking about how the next generation is continuing to carry the message you all went forward and telling the history in new and innovative ways so that so that every kid around the world knows what you all did. Thank you. Good morning. One well, welcome to Tampa, a very inclusive city. One of the reasons why uh, many years ago I chose to, to move to this city to raise my children because we are a, a welcoming city that uh, values the diversity. And uh, for Councilwoman Henderson, I just want to let you know that when she said we were very beautiful, she was locking eyes with me. I, just, <laughs> I, so, <laughs> I, I saw that. Thank you. Uh, so, you know, I, I want, I want to, um, you know, it, it's so clear to me, one, you know, this is recent history, not ancient history that you spoke of in, in the world that you lived in. And unfortunately, all too often, it's, still, it's the world that people today in 2023 live in. And it may not be as vocal. It may not be as 
in your face, but there's 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 this systemic um, discrimination discrimination and racism that you know runs through not just this country but many countries in this world. So important voices like yours, you know, still echo loud in halls, and because your voice will be a reminder to the younger people that once you and I and others are gone, they'll be able to pick up you know that torch and, and run with it. So thank you so much for doing that. It's you know, the fight for civil rights will never end. It's, it's a, like a garden. You can have the most beautiful garden, but there's always gonna be some weeds and you have to pull those weeds. And if you, if you ignore it, the weeds will overcome. And unfortunately, we see even in the last 10 or 15 years in this country, we see, you know, a lot of weeds growing that we have to continue to tender after. So uh, thank you one for being a great gardener. Uh, thank you for being a steward for uh, civil rights and being an example for the next generation. Thank you. Councilman. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for coming and for your message today. Uh, I really, you know, the, the idea that we're just continuing to fight because as Councilman Clendenin said, you know, it'd be nice to think that those lessons were learned, but hatred is on the rise in this city and in this state and in this nation. Um, and it's, it's sad, it's unfortunate, but what I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we have people from the past who are still telling the story, who have lived it before, and can say, hey, if we don't tend this garden, we are going to repeat what happened. Uh, and some days it feels like we can't. So I think your message to, to me, particularly today, was very inspirational about not giving up, about continuing to fight, and uh, your legacy and everything you've done to continue to fight over the years is is very inspiring and i just wanted to say thank you thank you very much it's it's a real yeah. honor thank you ma'am Next up, we have our Tampa Police Officer of the Month, Council Member Vieira, will do the presentation. very much uh, go ahead yeah thank you so much mr. chairman uh, it is my great pleasure here today uh, to uh, help present the Tampa City Council commendation for our Tampa police officer of the month um, as I always say this is something that we do because it reflects the values of the community that we serve that strongly supports our police officers as well as our firefighters as our community heroes who run into situations that the vast majority of us starting with myself uh, would run away from and that's why we do this, to reflect those values and to make sure to remind our community of things that they can aspire to um, as great Tampanos and acts of heroism and of sacrifice that we should always, always honor. So, sir, if you'd like to go ahead and give some words. Good morning, Council. That's a tough one to follow there. I'm Mike Hutner. I'm Deputy Chief. I'm here on behalf of Chief Burkhoff. And I'm a, it's an honor to do this. Um, Officer Rigo is a, a good friend and a great worker, so I have the privilege to do this today. So serving the city of Tampa for 12 years, Master Police Officer Jerry Rigo plays an integral part in security operations for large-scale events in the city of Tampa, including those held at Raymond James Stadium, which can attract between 40,000 and 60,000 spectators. In addition to planning security 
for regular season football games for the University of South Florida and the Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Officer Rigo also played a vital role in the planning for Super Bowl 55 and WrestleMania, which were just a couple of months apart. Recently, the National Football League conducted a security audit where they ranked the city of Tampa number two out of 32 NFL host cities for most thorough safety planning and considerations. This recognition was in part due to Officer Rigo's unwavering dedication to keeping spectators safe. Aside from his responsibilities as Raymond, at Raymond James Stadium, this year Officer Rigo was tasked with the safety planning for the Gasparilla Children's Parade, which is the second largest children's parade in the nation. Without hesitation, he tackled the challenge head on, and the parade was an all around success. Just a week later was the full Gasparilla invasion and parade for which he also assisted with security and logistical planning. Officer Rigo's current assignment has him responsible for organizing the logistics for a full scale active shooter exercise that will include the members of the Tampa Police Department, Tampa Fire Rescue, and the City of Tampa Office of Emergency Management. It can be said with full confidence that this large scale training exercise is in the hand of someone we can all trust and count on. His proficiency and knowledge in planning large scale security operations, paired with his ability to always go above and beyond to assist during these events, are the reasons Master Police Officer Jerry Rigo is being recognized as the Tampa Police Department Officer of the Month for August 2023. So before we allow you to speak, Sharon, sure, before we hear from very grateful uh, council members, I know we have some members of our community who are here uh, to honor you with, with gifts. So go ahead, guys. Good morning, council. Brandon Barclay, uh, John Miller from Tampa PBA. We're here to present a plaque to Officer Rigo. Um, I had the privilege when he was hired of him relieving me at night, so we could tell some more stories later. But this is the plaque. Congratulations. Thank you always do a great job. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Good morning, Good morning nice. Officer Rigo. I'm Grace Gonzalez. I'm here on behalf of the Gonsmart family and the 1905 family of restaurants. Thank you so much for your 12 years of dedication to this city. We want to thank you and reward you with thank this you gift much. card to any of our locations around Florida. Please enjoy with your family and a night I off. I love your and restaurants. Refuel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi. Good morning, Council. Jill Watecki from Tampa Theater. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to celebrate the good work that these officers do in our community. So on behalf of the historic Tampa Theater, we'd like to offer you and your family an annual pass to come see us anytime. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Good morning. I'm Mark Haney with Zoo Tampa. And on behalf of our board of directors, uh, we'd like to present you with a year membership to the zoo for you Thank and your you, family. And we've got some zoo goodies here. There's a sloth in there, which nice. is like definitely not that. your spirit animal because uh, <laughs> it sounds like you're busy and, and uh, working hard. Yes, sir. So. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Appreciate you. Good morning, Council. I'm Grace from Bill Curry. Nice to meet you. And thank you so much. I've for your seen you around there. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for your dedication to the city. Um, we gave you a Bill Curry swag bag as well as a um, gift certificate for Data Supply. We're great. All great. You thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Good morning, Council. Brian Ford with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Humbled to be here on such a historic morning uh, with council. So thank you. And thank you for continuing this program. Yes, Officer sir. Rigo, thank you. We're going to be busy on Saturday, yes, right? Yes, sir. I'll be there. <laughs> now, on behalf of the Glazer family and our entire organization, thank you for all that you, not only at Raymond James Stadium, but throughout uh, your career and for all that you do for the city, your family sacrifice. And yes, sir. as you've heard me say before, we have a little tradition at One Buck to recognize people that go over and above. Yes, and sir. you, my friend, definitely go over Thank and you. above. There's a little game ball. Thank you, sir. Thank you Appreciate very much. You being here. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Go Bucks. <laughs> Morning, Council. Ruben Delgado. I'm here on behalf of a few We're not people. sure who this guy is, guys. <laughs> Get him out of here. Oh, I got a lot to say. Go Dragons. Um, thank you. On behalf of uh, Heritage CEO Ernie Garrete and then the Next Level Brands, which is Andrew Wright, Jeff Giganti, and Joe Gigino, we want, to, we want to give good. you, well, this is this is going to be funny because we want to give you a few gift certificates to restaurants. Oh, nice. um, and I will say that during Super Bowl, I had an infant part of playing in the Super Bowl. He worked out of my office for about a year, I think. Um, 
Jeff and that guy right there. Jeff and Jerry. Jeff. And I'll tell you that it didn't. It wouldn't have gone as smooth as it did um, without their work behind the scenes. And nobody really knows the work they do for special events. And I'll tell you, the city likes to do special events. Um, they're all safe. They come, they go. Everybody has a good time. But it's because of the work of him and his team. So uh, it is truly overdue. I probably should have put you in for this when I was working. Don't worry about Chief. I did take you to dinner. But on behalf, so there's fifty dollar <laughs> gifts. To, he did. I did. I did. Fifty dollar gift certificate later. to the meat market. Uh, Fifty dollar gift certificate to Palazzo's Pizza and a hundred dollars for the next level restaurant. Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you very much, Chief. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, nice to see you. Good morning, Council. Pete Brevy on behalf of Stuart Clark and Bush Gardens of Tampa Bay. And as I say every month, uh, thank you for continued support of law enforcement and continuing to recognize the absolutely incredible work that they do um, each and every day. Obviously, this is for the month of August, but we obviously know that this year, this work that they do is year-round, 24 hours a day, on behalf of not only the guests that visit our city, but the citizens as well. Um, I'm sorry that I don't have food. I know that you like food. I do? Yeah, apparently. It's <laughs> word on the wall that you like food. Well, <laughs> But we do have food at the, at the park. So on behalf of Bush Gardens, we're going to give you four tickets to come visit our park someday. Thank and you, unlimited sir. food and anything else. Thank you. Can. And you know our new sergeant, I heard. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard. Good luck with that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Miranda Hilton from Steps Towing. Um, on behalf of Todd Stepp and um, the Steps Towing team, we appreciate you, we thank you, and we'd like to present you with a five-hour limo ride for you nice. and 17 of your closest family and friends, as well as, <laughs> 17, um, as well as a gift certificate uh, for $50 at Publix. So nice. thank, thank you. you very Congratulations. Much. Thank you we so much. We appreciate you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Good morning, sir. Back. Yeah, we're back. We met earlier, um, and I wanted to congratulate you on, you, on being selected. On behalf of the Yummy House China Bistro, my name is Steve Michelini, by the way. On behalf of the uh, Yummy House Bistro, we're providing with a gift certificate so you can enjoy yourself with the, all of the things that Pete Brevy said you couldn't have. <laughs> um, on behalf of Bella Brava, we're providing you with another gift certificate so you can enjoy yourself over there. On behalf of the Meat Market, Tampa, and Old Hyde Park, enjoy yourself there. Thank you. And on behalf of the Chicho Restaurant Group, you can enjoy yourself. Thank you so much. Have Thank fun. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And in between all those games at the stadium. We'll be there Saturday. You coming Thank out? You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So, so as you all can tell from that, uh, there's a real outpouring of support for this gentleman and whatnot. And so we would like to, sir, on behalf of a very grateful Tampa City Council and City of Tampa, give you this commendation, sir. We really appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. I do have a few notes. I don't want to miss anybody. Thank you so much. It is an honor to be here on the same day as the doctor. That was inspirational. Um, thank you for having me, City Council. I appreciate you guys very much. You guys have done great for our city. I'm born and raised in, in the city of Tampa, actually the county, but you know worked here for many years, and I appreciate all you guys. You guys are doing a great job. The uh, thank you to the chiefs. I know Chief Burkhall did have to go, but I wanted to thank Chief Hutner for doing the presentation for me. Chief Calvin Johnson, all the staff. They, they're the ones that put me, uh, you know, up here, so I appreciate that. The uh, most important thing to me, actually, is, is my squad when it comes to work. You guys over here, if you look at the squad over here, Jeff, my partner, J&J &J Productions, we call it. Uh, he helped me with the Super Bowl, with WrestleMania. Everybody knows that they know me. They know Jeff. They, they know Jeff more than me. So, Jeff, love you. Thank you so much. Starting with Captain Delahaye. He is uh, acting major, but he is my captain. Well, was up till two days ago. Captain Brown. My captain, appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Lieutenant Barry, thank you guys, my squad. My brother, Todd, everybody knows you. I actually first, when I won this award, I thought it was a mistake, it was for my brother. Because he's been here 23 years. Everybody knows he's, he's a great cop. He is retired now, but he is back with our squad. So I love having my brother on the squad and all you guys. Tom Barry, everybody knows Tom. He's won this what, award, what, four, four times, Tom? <laughs> Something like that. So everybody probably knows Tom, but appreciate all you guys. We got a new sergeant here, Wendy. Galeris, you know I had a shout out to you. So I do have my girlfriend here many, many years. Gabby's here. I thank you for being here and supportive. My family, thank you guys for being very supportive. I'll make sure I didn't miss anybody here. Um, oh, where's Gigi? 
Thank you, Gigi. Thank you, Lydia. You guys have been everything to me. You know that. You guys have helped me out with everything. Oh, there's Lydia. You gotta sit up, Lydia. Everybody can see you. What's that? Gee, what are you doing? So, thank you guys for all the gifts. I appreciate you, the PBA. I appreciate everything, guys. And I love working for the city. Like I said, born and raised here. It's been a pleasure. So, thank you very much. I'll try to keep it short, so I, I like to ramble on. So, thank you guys very much. Thank you. Great. And now, and now they get to Congratulations, obviously very well deserved because I've never seen this many gifts for an officer and this much support. So you are loved and respected and we're grateful every time you put on that uniform, uh, the sacrifice you make, the sacrifice your family makes, because it's Thank not you, easy. But uh, obviously your reputation speaks for itself. You're a great, uh, you're a great gentleman and a great officer and thank, thank you, you for your service. Very well deserved. Thank you, Councilman sir. Carlson. Yeah, same thing. I don't think I've seen an entourage like this with any in the others before. So congrats. It's all on. because Jeff's here and <laughs> you guys. Trust me. Um, uh, the um, I, I just want to say, you know, if you watch if you watch movies or, or read books, there's so many terrifying things out there in the world. And uh, if you if you watch, I don't want to name any specific ones, but if you watch these things, you would never go to a public event. And the only reason that we can go to public events and feel safe is because of you and your team who protect us like that. And I can't imagine all the different places you have to look under and all the, the people you have to filter through and everything. But it's set, these, these big events are such risky things and we're so thankful that you keep us all safe. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you for all the work you do. This is the, I think this is the most interesting thing about doing these officer of the month is that everyone has a real specialty and your specialty is for lack of a better word giant event planning and that's a lot that's a lot of moving parts and so what i want to say is i just i really appreciate the way that our police department finds the right allows our officers to find their best fit and so we're really lucky to have you and that you were able to find your way to this position that you just obviously are really good at. It's, you're, it's a natural. Um, so, you know, thank you for all the work you do. It does make people feel safer when they go to these large events. But just the amount of work in your head, the organizing, the making sure all the moving parts are working is really impressive. So thank you for all you do. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate you. I think the understatement of the day was Tampa likes her special events or something like that because you're, it's absolutely true. We, we, we love our special events and our large scale events and, the, and they don't, the safety isn't an accident. And I think those of us that are involved understand that. Thank you for everything. And based on, on the crowd that turns out, I think we need to, you need to look into a second limousine. Oh, yeah, that would be nice. People. So, yeah, no, I appreciate the, what I have. Thank uh, you very you much. Seem that you have a lot of friends, obviously people that admire you and the work that you do. So thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, congratulations. I love your passion and enthusiasm. Giving a shout out to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the police department. I can see that you all love one another very much. Congratulations. That's all I got to say. I did forget one of my favorite people in the whole yeah. world. Stan Merchant. Oh. Where are you? Okay. Everybody knows Stan. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, your girlfriend You're is here. back there, Stan. I'm sorry. By the way, your girlfriend is here, so she, she knows all the restaurants that you got uh, gift cards for. We're going to hide half of those. I just want you to remember that she knows <laughs> yes, that you got those gift cards. As she's well worth it. <laughs> You should Thank have told you, Stan to stand up. That was it. What's that? You should have told him back there to stand up. Yeah, he won it. He won it last year. Very impressive. He's my corporal now. That so was a thank short, you very that was, much. That was a short joke. <laughs> well, there's not much to say. I mean, your crowd here is bigger than most politicians gets on election day votes. I mean, you don't need a you don't need a a limousine. You need a train with about ten cars behind you. Because uh, I mean, I don't know about the eating, but I tell you what. Everyone you got there is a great restaurant. And uh, congratulations to you, sir. On a serious note, uh, it takes one police officer to make one good police force. And when you do that, and you do that on a daily basis, each one, every day, you got one hell of a great police department. And you have camaraderie, help for each other, and help for the people you serve. And it's harder to be a police officer than be an elected official because you catch hell no matter what you do. We catch it once in a while. You guys catch it all the time. You have to make a decision on a hundredth of a second to do or not to do. 
we can at least weigh on it, think about it, and then do it. But the police officers throughout the country have one hundredth of a second to make a decision, and they're based on that reality by the public. So what you guys do, ladies and gentlemen, on all forces, is very important to the viability of wherever you work at. So congratululations you and your force. Thank you very much for the guy you. Thank you, sir. And we, we appreciate the support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me, yes, sir. Thank you. All right. We'll take a moment here to clear the room and then we have another commendation. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. You know, the list of people. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, sir, Councilman Vieira. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. It is my great pleasure here today to have a Tampa City Council commendation to our good friends who are up here with me at uh, Best Medical Academy, which stands for Brain Expansion Scholastic Training Medical Academy. Many of us have gone to their amazing events where they support the youth. Their big, big, big push and mission is to make sure that we get more minorities in the medical field, particularly as being doctors. The whole idea here is one of opportunity, making sure that the young people here in the city of Tampa um, and throughout our greater Tampa area know of the amazing opportunities uh, that are before them. If people are just willing to work hard, go forward, etc., they can, God willing, with the help of organizations like BEST, uh, fulfill their God-given potential. And that's what BEST is all about, making sure that individuals who are racial and ethnic minorities know about the opportunities that exist in potentially being doctors. They do really, really amazing work. So if y'all would like to uh, speak, uh, go ahead, ma'am. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Morning. On behalf of my husband, Dr. Frederick, and I, co-founders of the BEST program, we would like to thank you for this, this opportunity to be here. I want you to know that in 2004, BEST became an official nonprofit organization here in the Tampa Bay region. We are proud to announce that since that time, over 5,000 students have successfully completed one or more of our many programs, and our enrollment continues to increase. Approximately 100 scholars to date have either been accepted into medical school, are in medical school, or have graduated from medical school. And there is an additional 1,000 scholars who have not gone that path of medical school, but other health-related careers. And as the number of youth who are seeking to get into healthcare careers increase, we want you to know that the BEST program is one of the most effective ways to help them accomplish that. Currently, we have students enrolled in our program from Dunbar Elementary, Sly Middle School, and Tampa Bay Tech Technical School. We believe that the BEST program gives them the tools that they need to be successful. I would like to introduce you to one of our students. He has been with us since high school, and he is an aspiring medical doctor. His name is Quan Bowen. Good morning, Council. Good morning. Um, my name is Quan Bowen. I am a junior at the University of South Florida. I have been with BEST since my sophomore year in high school. Um, since then, I have uh, been through the summer uh, mentorship program that there's so many programs you can't count them um, the best FDOP it's a partnership with Moffitt and with that uh, summer mentorship program I've been able to secure an internship a paid internship position at Moffitt I've been there a year now and uh, it just has truly been an amazing experience uh, one that I've never thought would occur um, being 
visiting shadowing doctors in the hospital. So it really takes the medicine off the books and puts it into a real world concept that you can touch, feel, and it just has been uh, an amazing experience. So I plan to matriculate to med school um, in the next coming year. Um, who's next? Okay. Okay. Hello, my name is Ernestine Woody Bethune, and I'm the proud principal of the Tampa Bay Technical High School. Uh, the BEST program has really allowed our students to understand what it is to see their future selves right now. Um, in the last couple of years, we've had students who've had virtual surgeries with all kinds of doctors from South Africa, from Denmark, we're literally in real time, they're seeing actual surgeries. A lot of our students during the summertime also participate in the summer programs he was actually talking about. It is amazing to be able to offer students what their future can look like right now. If you can't see it, you can't be it. And every single year, our students who participate with BEST can see who they will be in the next five years, in the next 10 years. BEST has absolutely helped everything that we do at TBT. Just to tell you about our school, we have been an A or B school for the last 14 years. Over 98% of our students actually graduate every single year, which makes us an outstanding school within Hillsborough County Schools. Good morning, I'm attorney Shamika Askew, and on behalf of Dr. Frederick, our board of directors, and our staff, we greatly appreciate this opportunity, Councilman Vera, for allowing us to come and speak about this amazing program. We also wanna thank you all for doing great work in the Tampa Bay community. Lastly, we do have a gala on Saturday, October 14th. We would love for all of you guys to attend. The proceeds will benefit all of these amazing programs that you have heard about today. So we would love to see you guys in attendance and thanks so much for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Oh, go ahead, please. Do, go ahead. Do y'all please, please. Council, good afternoon. My name is Mustafa Jibawi. I am a 22-year-old pre-med student that moved to the States in 2017. I came from the Middle East. Um, I've always had a dream to become a medical professional, especially at a young age. Um, and I've always wanted to have the experience of me having the hands-on experience with doctors, seeing the environment of uh, medicine and how hospitals work. And with uh, the grace of Dr. Frederick and his family, it, the, that dream actually became true. So as me staying with Dr. Frederick with that program, almost going to medical school, I just wanna appreciate you guys for everything that you guys done. It's a great program and I'm excited for what's coming next. Thank you. Good morning, Council. My name is Jeanette Moran, and as an, a Hispanic American citizen, I want to thank you all for this beautiful, this beautiful meeting. In the shadow of Dr. Clayton and here with BEST, I think we can seriously say we're blessed to live today because without programs like this, without people like this, without leaders like this, we wouldn't be here, you know, in the face of, you know, the struggle of diversity and discrimination, we're here to fight and we're here to step up. And it's a blessing to be here and thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Thanks again. No, no. Now, if I may, so on behalf of a Tampa City Council, it's my great pleasure to give to Best Medical Academy for all the great work they do. Uh, you talk about a dream, you try to make it real, to quote Bruce Springsteen, a Tampa City Council commendation. There you go. Thank, thank, thank you. So you. And now, City Council. Well, congratulations. Um, it's been a, a very positive and inspirational morning here at City Council, uh, as you saw how we began and how we're continuing. And I just, I, I can say with total confidence, seeing all of you that the community and the future of this community is very, very bright. Thank you for the commitment that you're making. Thank you for inspiring us, the people watching. You have a very bright future ahead. You as a principal uh, coming down today, you don't have an easy job. You know, you're leading. You're inspiring lots and lots of young people that are the future of this community. So thank you. Thank you for all that you do. Congratulations. Councilman Carlson, would you like to say anything? Yeah, thank, uh, thank you all for doing what you're doing. We obviously need more um, people in the healthcare industry because there's always shortages. And it's great to get people from all kinds of backgrounds there. 
And Tampa Bay Tech, you all are putting out a lot of um, uh, great entrepreneurs. There's so many successful entrepreneurs out there. And uh, so congrats, and please keep doing whatever you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, uh, I had the pleasure of going to the um, white coat uh, ceremony for the Dunbar Elementary mm -hmm. last year, and it was so amazing. Uh, not only the, the children, but their parents. And it was so neat to see the absolute buy-in and the pride and, you know, those kids are young enough, not all of them are going to go into the healthcare field, but they absolutely get the, they understand that they could. They develop their own sense of strength and who they're going to become. And I think for, for those of you who've always had the dream, I think it's incredibly wonderful. And the, the one of the best things though that I heard about with the Dunbar Elementary, because they have this, is the telemed program you're offering for your parents. So that parents can come down to the school and, and have telemed appointments right there. So all of the innovation that's coming around these programs. And so I just want to say thank you. And thank you also to Tampa Bay Tech for doing, I mean, really just encouraging kids to find themselves and who they are and uh, be able to do that before they graduate. I think there's a lot of value in seeing what you can be, as you said. You, can't, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know what jobs exist. And so I think it's really important that there's a lot of jobs in healthcare. It's not just doctor. There's a lot of things that people can do. So thank you so much. Um, very inspiring this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to double down on what um, Councilwoman Hertek said. It's a, a, exactly the, uh, opening eyes of young people to see the opportunities out there. Um, you know, depending on someone's socioeconomic circumstances, they could grow up in, a, in an environment that they don't see these opportunities. They don't, they don't see themselves in those opportunities. So to be able to have these incredible types of programs that you can inspire young people at an early age and, and show pathways to better lives, I think that is exactly what we should be doing, these affirmative type of programs uh, and, and that type of outreach. And I, I agree 100% with what she, what she said. So thank you so much for what you're doing, and I, I hope I hope that these types of programs, you know, grow and continue and 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 exist in every part of our neighborhood and every part of our schools because I think they're very important. Thank you. Yes. Good morning. Well deserved commendation. Congratulations. The fact that we have so much health disparity um, in this country, the fact that Best is tackling that one kid at a time and drawing that interest into the medical field is just very impressive. Uh, Dr. Woody, of course, as a dragon, the one school I do not talk about is tech. Tech, 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 I mean, Miss Woody, yes. <laughs> Uh, I don't Enough talk with the dragon already. No, I said tech. I'm giving tech love. The Tampa Bay Tech, um, tech Titans. Um, Ricky Kenzie, even one of my alumni friends who just loves his school. You all are doing great work. You've been at A school for a long time. I've been very jealous of that because I know how hard that is to get. It is not easy to get. And so thank you for bringing the students um, today. That's the most important part of this presentation. Thank you for what you said, um, the diversity of the healthcare field is very important for so many different reasons. We don't have to even sit here and talk about it. We know that they exist. But this commendation is well deserved. And of course, in the shadow of uh, Dr. Clayton is not actually in the shadow. You all are in the spotlight today. And I commend you for all that you do. Darlene, if you're listening, get some information about the um, October 14th gala. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. So I guess you went to Jefferson? <laughs> I'm only taking a guess. But anyway, I never, I never went to high school. I went to Jefferson. But let, let me just say this. Uh, it's a pleasure, all of you, that what you have in mind, what you want to do in life. You see, as you mature in life, when you're a kid, you become immune to what you don't see. But what you see is what you want to do. And sometimes in, in any education field, I know there's an island just not too far from Key West where they start teaching you what you want to do when you're in high school. Most of those kids, when they do not only high school, they go to the hospital and see what the doctors do. So they get acclimated on how the procedures go and they have a leg up, in my opinion anyway, on what it's all about. So you're one step ahead of somebody who doesn't know where they want to go. 
and you're one step ahead and just keep it that way because that's what's keeping you what you want to do and more than likely that's the best way you can learn your education and achieve the goals that you're so entitled to. So muchísimas gracias, doctora, and all of you who want to be doctors, thank you very much. You can cure a guy my age. Appreciate it very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Congratulations. All right. Before we go to item number four, it was brought up to me about item number five. We didn't bring this up in the, uh, the agenda approval. Councilman Pundin, you made this motion for item number five? Yeah, I, I make a motion to uh, the staff uh, put together a pretty comprehensive report. I say I accept the staff report. We don't need staff for that. So, so move to receive and file item number receive, five. Move to receive and file. We have a motion from Councilmember Clendenin, and second from Councilmember Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, Mr. B Day, we do not need you for item number five. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, you want it? Um, I just want to say. I just want to say I talked. I spoke to legal about this, and um, the 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 developer has the the right and the obligation to do something there, but but um, we're not prohibit. They if they ask us to take away that requirement, then we could vote to. Re but we cannot force them to do it. But they can ask us for it. And so I think what we ought to do is um, send a letter to the developer to ask them to ask us to remove the requirement. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Carlson, second from Councilmember Miranda. All in favor? Oh, just a discussion Wait, first. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Before we take that vote, uh, Councilman Clendenin. Yeah. So I mean, I, I obviously it was I was passionate about this issue, and I, I talked with them about what um, I think they, they pursued. If you haven't had a chance to look at the memo, they pursued a lot of different options. I think part of the frustration we had, so we had the uh, arborist that represented the um, the developer, but we also had our city arborist look at it subsequent to our public discussions here and what they came out was they were able to uh, on the sidewalk they were able to shrink the size and they're going to slope it towards the trees so that water that falls towards the sidewalk will actually go in to towards the tree um, and to alleviate and arborists from both the city and the developer were satisfied that that was going to be sufficient to be able to give that tree what it needed to survive um, they, they looked at, I mean, I, I was pretty, I was satisfied that they looked at all the other different options. Um, you know, so, I mean, I just, I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that that was, that was the last option on the table was doing that, so. Yeah, I, I think there are folks in here to speak in public comment about it too, but there are a lot of external tree, tree experts. You want to leave it on the agenda? Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. Okay. So I'll, I, I will, I'll rescind my uh, motion to receive file. Yeah, we'll keep item number five as it is with Mr. B Day on standby. All right, thank you very much. Item number four, we have Beth Alden who will be presenting from the TPO about a tri-county MPO merger concept. And with that, we have a PowerPoint. If we could bring it up on the main screen. Yes, ma'am, welcome to Tampa City. Good morning. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm Beth Alden. I'm the executive director of the Hillsborough Transportation Planning Organization, uh, which serves Tampa, Temple Terrace, Plant City, and unincorporated Hillsborough County. Uh, and I appreciate you taking a little bit of time this morning um, to talk about this topic, which affects all of the cities and counties of the Tampa Bay region. And it's important for each of our local governments to talk internally about what this means for you. All right, and T and I, have, okay, there it is. Yes, ma'am, go ahead, now we can all see it. Thank you. Um, so for your audience, what is an MPO or Metropolitan Planning Organization? It is a policy board of local officials that represents a metropolitan area. It sets priorities for collaborating on investing in significant transportation projects. It has, a, has to take into consideration a number of factors like performance measures, local growth trends, your comprehensive plan, public input, a number of different factors. Um, right now, we do have three different metropolitan planning organizations serving each of Hillsborough, Pinellas, and Pasco counties. Um, the Hillsborough organization is known as the TPO, Transportation Planning Organization, uh, and City of Tampa is represented by Council People Maniscalco, Clendenin, and Hertak. And we appreciate the time that you contribute to that. Our, our urbanized area uh, across three counties has gradually grown so that we are very interrelated at this point. 
Um, we can, under federal law, uh, continue to have separate metropolitan planning organizations for the three counties if we have a coordinated process uh, for discussing the transportation projects that are important to the entire urbanized area. So we do have that process in place right now. It is the Suncoast Transportation Planning Alliance. Uh, if you're curious about it, the website is suncoasttpa.org. In 2023, the Florida legislature uh, passed a law asking the MPOs of these three counties to evaluate merging and to provide a report exploring the benefits, the costs, and the process of consolidating into a single MPO to serve this urbanized area. So that is due by the end of this calendar year. And so we've been working on it together, the staff of the three, of the three MPOs. Um, the idea of merging is not new, has been discussed for several decades. Um, there are pros and cons to this, uh, you know, has, as has been clear over the years. Um, some of the pros, would, you know, people point to Metro Plan Orlando, which is an MPO serving a tri-county area, uh, and that because it represents a lot of different communities around Orlando, uh, it has a policy board that represents both sides of the aisle and can advocate effectively in Tallahassee and in Washington, D.C. by coming together across the aisle and speaking to um, leaders uh, at the state and the national level, um, building on the relationships um, that they have within that board. Uh, so that kind of political diversity strengthens the ability of the region to bring home major projects. Uh, cons. Um, uh, questions have been raised about uh, will our smaller cities still have the same role in the decision-making process that they have had? Uh, right now, City of Plant City, City of Temple Terrace, uh, have a voting seat uh, on our TPO board. That probably would not be the case if we merged. Uh, will our neighborhoods have the same influence, the same ability to be able to speak directly to decision-makers uh, that they have had where they can come downtown to downtown Tampa uh, to our meetings uh, and, uh, and provide input. Um, and there have been questions about will this shift emphasis to major highway projects instead of uh, funding community safety, access, and mobility needs. Um, there are larger MPOs across this country. Atlanta Regional Commission is one, serves 11 counties, uh, has found a way to mitigate some of the downsides of being a large organization is well known nationally for having a livable centers initiative. Um, so there are some strategies for mitigating some of the downsides. Uh, right now, uh, your TPO is considering entering into an agreement with the other two MPOs, Forward Pinellas and Pasco MPO, um, to evaluate the merger and put together the steps for how to merge the MPOs the timeline would be by July of 2027. Um, the memorandum of understanding does not commit the MPOs to merge. It lays out guiding principles um, for evaluating that merger. So for example, one of the guiding principles is that the voting membership of that policy board should be proportionate to population. Uh, and also that we must remain committed to public outreach to all of our communities. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here with you today. Uh, I'm seeking City of Tampa's input in particular on entering into this memorandum of understanding. Uh, Hillsborough TPO will be considering approving this MOU in October. Uh, if we enter into this MOU, there are a number of decisions that will need to be made uh, over the next few years. Uh, one of the parts of being an MPO is a lot of federal red tape um, that makes sure that projects that come to this area are well vetted, well evaluated, uh, and all of those things. But that means that there are a lot of hurdles to clear. I'm not going to go through this entire list with you, 
um, but we do have a timeline uh, over the next few years of major decision points. We have just closed out our public opinion survey. It was open from July 5th to July 20th, uh, August 20th, which was this past Sunday. And we really appreciate the city of Tampa's help in getting the word out uh, about this survey. We were able to receive more than 1,700 responses uh, on the survey. Uh, but that won't be the last time that we're seeking feedback from the public. This is an initial <coughs> conversation. Uh, and at this time, I would like to ask for your input uh, for me to bring back to the TPO board uh, as it considers entering into this memorandum of understanding for a merger. Thank you very much. So I've been on the MPO slash TPO since I first got elected in 2015. And my first big meeting was the uh, question on TVX, as it was called back then. And the district that I first represented had Seminole Heights, Tampa Heights, parts of Tampa Heights, and West Tampa. And the interstate cuts right through dividing those communities. And you were there, I was there, and we had public comment until, I don't know, two in the morning, one in the morning, midnight, the amount of people that came out, um, meaning that they cared about their neighborhood because with the expansion, <coughs> potential expansion of, of the interstate, it was gonna affect a lot of properties, a lot of residents, uh, and I had voted against that from the beginning. And my concern moving forward eight years later with this tri-county merger is that those voices in those neighborhoods get diluted, they get silenced, they get, because it becomes so big that their voice gets, you know, could fade away. Because now it's tri-county and it's not just Hillsborough and it's not, you know, it's, I think that's very dangerous. Uh, because it wasn't just that one night, that one vote uh, regarding the tip, as it was, uh, as it's called in our annual meeting, but it was the, the following year, it was a late meeting, and the following year. And then we went from TBX to TB Next to, you know, so many people had concerns. And it's an issue that still hasn't gone away. So that's my biggest concern, is that we're gonna lose the strength of those voices, because there are a lot of voices. There are a lot of voices and people with serious concerns because it's affecting their neighborhoods. So um, I just wanted to share that. And I'm on that <coughs> board, and I will be at that meeting when this discussion comes up, and I'll bring this up then. So Council Member Hertek, did you have your hand up first? And then Clinton, and then Miranda, and then you. Um, thank you for this. Uh, I have done all the research. I pulled the resolution, the original one, um, the Code of Federal Regulations, really looking at this. Um, so the biggest deal is the city of Tampa doesn't have to agree to this. We don't have to agree to the MOU. It's true. And, and we have to be a part of the MOU. So I think we all need to understand that as a board. Um, so I actually have a friendly amendment to the draft MOU that I will be presenting after we listen to everyone. Um, it's important to me that you or who, whoever um, succeeds you, as I know you're heading toward retirement, and congratulations on that. We will miss you. Um, to come back to council when there is a plan to keep us updated uh, after the MOU, maybe a, a yearly as, as we saw this calendar, if this goes forward. Um, and the real concern is that we absolutely have to have more than one seat on this board. Um, the city of Tampa, we, we absolutely have the largest population. Um, to, to let the public know, historically, um, a majority of local, uh, a majority of the funding for local transportation projects in the city of Tampa have come from grants that have passed through the MPO. So this is really important to all of us. Uh, we just got an update of um, what what they're doing to fix the um, the stormwater on Florida and Tampa. And in addition to that, that's going to be a BRT lane. That money is coming from FDOT, uh, the Ola Avenue bikeway and, and Central Avenue bikeway that they talked about. Just again, both of those are FDOT projects. We don't have the money to fund that. And if, the M if it becomes a regional MPO, will we have the say, the power, the, the ability to focus on these issues that the city can't afford but that we've had a wonderful partnership with FDOT to get through. Um, the MOU is drafted, I don't believe, adequately reflects the level of involvement and authority that the city of Tampa has in the formal process of this. 
Um, like I said, I'm going to listen to my colleagues, and then afterward, I have a um, I have a friendly amendment to that draft MOU. Councilman Clendenin, Miranda Vieira, Henderson, Carlson. Because of sunshine, this is really kind of the first opportunity we've been able to even even though the three of us, uh, Councilman Hertek and, and Councilman Matascaco, myself, serve on the TPO, have had an opportunity to kind of hear each other out on this. And you know exactly, you know, some of my input as as we've discussed this before. You know, I, I have grave concerns about uh, the merger concept um, and the impact that it would have on the city of Tampa for the people that I represent. You know, and I, I and I don't mean to undermine, the, you know, the broader concept here uh, uh, that you know the, the the benefit of having this type of an organization in the bigger picture, because there's obviously some tremendous transportation needs that cut across all three of these counties. I mean, Pasco County, as it continues explosive growth, they have they have very much some uh, critical transportation needs. Um, pa uh, Pinellas County, a completely different animal. You know what, what's going to work in, in in Pinellas County. The irony in this with Hillsborough County, we already have our competing needs because the type of transportation challenges that we face in the eastern and southeastern part of our county is very different from the transportation needs that we face as a city of Tampa. Um, so we're, we're already within the current TPO process within Hillsborough County, we're already balancing those things. My biggest concern about the representation issue, because I hear that a lot as, a, as something that's tossed out is, well, you know, we just need to fight for more representation for the city of Tampa. It doesn't matter how many people we get, we'll always be overwhelmed by all these other competing needs. And especially within the reality of, of if we, you and I have spoken in the past about, you know, in a sterile environment, some of the stuff makes sense, but then you inject the world of politics. And when the world of politics is what's happening in Pinellas and Pasco and even parts of our own county, it changes the dynamic. And I think with every time I look at this, at every angle I look at it, the city of Tampa is on the losing end of it. And our, our, I think what's been clear to me in our transportation challenges, not just in the city of Tampa and Hillsborough County, but in our region, is that we, like everything else in the world, we lack resources to accomplish everything that needs to be done. And when, when you lack these resources and, you've got, and, you're, and your scale is so big, everything suffers. I think we're at a point in, in the evolution of these challenges to go smaller, to bring back down, to concentrate on the areas that we can be successful in. And I think that is a clear example of why, like the city of Tampa is a great place because how we're building out some, we're in this, we're in this incredible growth period in an urban environment with urban planning that we have the ability to do some amazing things with integration, with density and housing and transportation that a lot of these other areas don't have the luxury of doing. Because the areas that are building out now in Pasco is still in that 1960s and 70s model of moving people through expressways. And same thing that's happening in East County with their challenges of getting people into Southeastern County. But in the city of Tampa, we have, we have really a great opportunity. And what I don't want this to do is trip up that opportunity. Because I'm excited about what we, where we're going right now in the city of Tampa and the opportunity we have of moving people and putting, putting this density in the right places so that we can build these models and that we can concentrate on here. And I don't want our voices diminished to the point that we lose this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councilman Moran. Thank you, Chairman. I, I agree mostly with Council Member Clendenton said. It, uh, when you look at Tampa, it's a little different than a lot of the areas because we're highly concentrated in a smaller geographical boundary with higher population. And uh, you mentioned something about population. So does that mean you're gonna have a weighted vote or is it just gonna be everybody votes, everybody's vote is the same no matter if you have a small amount of individuals or a big large individuals like the city of Tampa? Is a vote gonna be weighted or is it gonna be by population or just your, your member, everybody's got the same, uh, same amount of uh, mustard at the table? I don't know that. So I, I, I've most experienced of some of that that has worked and some of that that has not worked. And therefore, I'm very cautious about joining anything that has to do with the city of Tampa that's not weighted on population in a geographical area. The impact is somewhere else. They're going to get it. They're going to take 50 or 20 years to complete what we've been through, the struggles that we've been through in stretching that dollar to go from one kind of the city to the other part of the city and back and forth. So yeah, we're strapped, but there's not one government that I know of that has money to do everything. They're all looking for the same thing you're looking for. The problem is that they're still mostly urban, and we're mostly what? In 
a small area that's creating a lot of need for transportation. So therefore, we're different. We're in the same boat, but we are different. So thank you very much when you think of these things. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Alden, I always, uh, I, I was outside for some of your presentations, so I apologize for that, but I always enjoy working with you during my tours of duty on the then MPO. Uh, I always enjoyed you, and you're always a, a marvelous person. But, you know, I, I, I tend to agree with some of the comments made in the proposed merger, which is that we'll lose our voice. And, and I, you know, when, when you, counties and cities and municipalities have very unique needs, et cetera, and that's why we have specific appointees to those boards from the city of Tampa, from Hillsborough County, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that that would be watered down. I think of, it's not the same, it's far from it, but, but I probably oppose it on the same principle. Some of the stuff you hear in Tallahassee, what I think is a power grab with taking a look at our 20 judicial circuits and shrinking them down to potentially six, I think the number is, um, uh, and I would oppose it under the same principle, even though maybe the origins are very different, which is you dilute seriously uh, the voice of people uh, when, when you have such a big body, uh, those smaller voices, uh, in, whether it's in the urban core, whether, whether it's in North Tampa or South Tampa, wherever it may be, would be very much so lost and dwindled. So I probably wouldn't look upon it very favorably from what I've heard. Uh, but again, I, I always appreciate hearing from you and you're always a pleasure. Thank you. Yes, Good morning. We, we met earlier mm -hmm. on a meeting call on Zoom, so I really that was a really great presentation a few months ago. Um, I'm more interested in the feasibility study coming out with the survey results um, that have already, you know, been completed, and to see what that says. There is a huge economic cost um, to this matter of the, of a merger. How that's going to be paid for is also important. Um, I'm not opposed to collaboration. I just feel that Tampa is the big fish in the pond because we have the largest population. And so um, for it to be um, advantageous for us, I feel like maybe the other counties um, may feel like we're going to take over because we have the greatest need in this corridor. So I, I would like to see the survey results um, before I make any other conclusions. Thank you. Council Member Carlson. Yeah, um, <clears throat> first, I'm very pro-regionalism and super-regionalism. Uh, the first forum I did on regionalism was, I think, in 96, I had Mayor Fisher and Mayor Greco speak, which was pretty controversial back then. And then we got the Tampa Bay Partnership and the Central Florida Partnership to talk even before the, um, even before the Olympic bid. We've got, um, I was talking to Vic about this the other day. Um, in the case of a hurricane or whatever, the people in Pinellas have to pass through here. And so we are part of a regional network. Um, when we, if we're going further east, we have to pass through Orlando and all, uh, everything that's happening there. It's, it's a mess um, between here and uh, Disney at least. Um, and it, it, they fix it and then 10 years later, it's a mess again. Um, you know, we've seen in hurricanes like Charlie, it took four or five hours just to get back from Orlando when people were over there. Um, so we need, to, we need to think regional. Also, people don't know boundaries. Um, if you, I say if you don't believe in regionalism, go look at the at the um, highways every morning, the bridges every morning. They're full of people, um, and there is a Tampa-centered attitude by some people, which um, is seen in a bad light by people around the region, where we think that all the jobs are here and people are driving over here. Go look at the bridges; people are going in both directions. Um, St. Pete has become the, the innovation capital of our region in the last. Uh, five or ten years, and so there's a lot of there's a lot of commerce, a lot of money. People are doing business throughout the region, and we need to be sensitive to it. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, there have been proposals like TBX, which my colleague mentioned, uh, which really hurt. Um, they have hurt, and and could have hurt even worse some of our historic neighborhoods. And so we have to think through that. It is important for people to be able to get through, but we've got to look at other solutions. Um, also, the heavy push using the Lexus lanes and BRTs, which which I was against. Um, I've talked before about the failed um, transit referendums, at least the last three in Hillsboro, um, which were just badly planned and badly run. Um, <clears throat> somehow we have to we have to figure out how to work together. Um, the um, uh, another thing where you know I, I mentioned we're Tampa is seen as a bully sometimes in the region, many times in the region. The greatest example is the Tampa Bay EDC, which which we talked about heavily four years ago, but they were called the Tampa EDC. They changed their name to Tampa Bay EDC. <clears throat> Guess what? St. Pete Pinellas stopped using the term Tampa Bay as much. 
with the Bucks and the other sports teams. They had for 30 years or more built a regional brand that we can talk about throughout the region. And with one decision, they killed regionalism. Um, and when you have companies like Pfizer come to the area, they don't show them Pinellas County. They don't show them St. Pete or Clearwater. They only show them Tampa. And, uh, and that was after somebody else recruited them to come here, by the way, um, Adam Hardin. <clears throat> and so we need to be careful about how we, how we fund things. We definitely need representation for Tampa, as my colleagues have said, and we need to protect Tampa's interests, but we have to be good players in the region. We can't replicate the bully mentality of the Tampa Bay EDC. Uh, the Tampa Bay Partnership has gone up and down over the years. Uh, they happen to have, a, I think, a great leader now who is very regionally focused, but there was controversy in the beginning that it was based in Tampa. And, um, and they've been working on some issues. I think the most successful partnership in our region, the only really truly successful partnership in our region um, that is an international case study is Tampa Bay Water. Um, if not for Tampa Bay Water, we would be pursuing a two to six billion dollar toilet tap project right now. Uh, there would be a burden to Tampa's ratepayers. So in this case, the regional, our regional partners help protect us from ourselves uh, when some people want to push a bad project. Um, look at T. Barta, which was kind of supposed to be something like this idea. Um, it was created by the Tampa Bay Partnership under the old regime, and it was a disaster from the beginning because they compromised too much and didn't put in funding for it. And um, actually literally helped write the 2035 plan 15 years ago, and none of it's being implemented because, because uh, we needed to bring the region together to really lobby and build power. The reason why Orlando gets so much money, where they have in the last 20 years, is because they built uh, a team to get power and influence in Tallahassee. Um, I think we need to work as a region, we need to protect Tampa's interests, um, but we need to show also that we're, that we're good partners regionally. If we continue to have our own organizations, we have to figure out how to how to work together. La two last things. Um, I met with the Undersecretary of Transportation when he was here, and um, you know, they're look Washington. The, the President's office is looking for shovel-ready projects for us to do. And so, whatever we can do, whatever form, if we can get those plans built and projects set up, I, I think there's a lot of funding at the federal level that we can get. And the last thing is just to say thank you for your service and hard work and your vision over the over many years. Thank you very much. Councilman Hertek, you wanted to make a motion? Yes, and just a couple other things. Uh, I, you mentioned Orlando has, uh, as having a successful MPO, uh, regional MPO, but I do want to point out that the Miami, South Florida area has chosen not to, and they're also very successful in what they do. So um, also to mention that tomorrow I'm going to the very last meeting of Tibarda. So that has not been successful, and the um, the push for other counties to look at us as a through fare is is a very difficult discussion. Um, and so I I look heavily at the cons of um, emphasis on regional projects that could that could destroy downtown neighborhoods um, that that all now are, are being affected by the construction that's already going on and the expansion of that and how that could further um, destroy the fabric of our community. Um, so in looking at this MOU, uh, under Article 2, uh, subsection E, where it says outreach to all local governments in the metropolitan planning area is an important step in the regional MPO formation process and individual MPOs will develop a coordinated presentation and engagement strategy to fully inform and seek input for all uh, affected local governments. I'd like to add a sentence after that that says, the largest incorporated city within each MPO will be provided the opportunity to take formal action on the recommended approach to a regional MPO prior to the respective MPO moving forward with re regionalization. We have a motion from Councilman Hurtak, second Councilman Riviera. Any discussion on the motion? Can you, can you state it again for me? Sure. Uh, the largest incorporated city within each existing MPO, which um, is us. us and St. Pete and uh, Newport Ritchie. Yeah. Newport Ritchie, okay. Uh, within, um, will be provided the opportunity to take formal action on the recommended approach to a regional MPO prior to the respective MPO moving forward with regionalization. 
we have a motion from Councilwoman Hertek, second from Councilmember Vieira. Any discussion? Yes, sir. I'm not questioning the motion, but I, I think if it was my population in Pasco County, I think there's been a shift to another city other than Newport Richard, but I'm not certain. You better research that. I think it may be. Oh, it's it's not written yeah, in I, I here, so. Yeah, that, that's fine. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Councilmember Carlson. Were you going to I, say do you want to call the vote first, sir? Do you care? Did you say yes or no? Yeah, I said yes. Oh, okay. Yes, well, ma'am. Motion carried unanimously. Um, I, I just want to say, um, Councilmember Hertek mentioned Orlando versus Miami. Um, one of the um, one of the big differences um, between from us in Orlando and Orlando and Miami is that is that there are two major, at least two major cities in the, our case, three or four major cities in our area. Mm -hmm. So in Miami, um, sometimes Fort Lauderdale doesn't feel a part of the region. And so it's it's not easy for them to get together. Orlando, what they've been able to do is is put kind of Orlando in the middle and bring everybody is the same thing as, as Atlanta. But, um, but we have populations might be different, but we have two, at least two or three cities that, that from their perspective look at each other as being equal. So we, um, we have to delicately walk that balance, which I think can be done. Thank you very, thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I just wanted to bring forward that the, what I think is one of the biggest points for us as a council, and that the the, the potential of a regional MPO to uh, weaken that coordination between land use and transportation that we're working so hard to do right now. So I would just like, can you tell us what the next steps are in terms of the city of Tampa and our council and when will this come before us again? Uh, and what kinds of things can we expect? I mean, uh, what would we have a vote? What, um, can you just kind of elaborate for the public and ourselves? Sure, so there is a group uh, called the Tampa Bay TMA Leadership Group, Tampa Bay Transportation Management Area Leadership Group, uh, which is part of the Suncoast Transportation Planning Alliance. Uh, and it meets quarterly. Uh, it includes three rep representatives from each of the MPOs. Yes, and, and Councilwoman Hertak is a, is a member of that. Um, that group will be uh, reviewing the choices for things like the voting membership of the board, uh, a typical budget, uh, a typical staffing plan, um, logistics like where would it be located, where would meetings be held, uh, how would public input opportunities be provided, um, the advisory committees which are typically volunteers, so like a citizens advisory committee, a transportation advantage board uh, where members of the public participate. Right now, those meetings occur within each county. Would those be merged and held at one central location, or would we continue to have separate meetings serving each county for people to participate in? So a number of different questions to be considered, um, and that will be considered at the TMA leadership group meetings on a quarterly basis, with then some recommendations made back to each of the three MPOs. Um, the MPOs can then choose to support those recommendations. It'll be ultimately up to the MPO board to make an action. Um, the MPO boards need to be cons continuing to consult with each of the member governments. And the reason why I'm saying need to and not saying I will ensure that this happens is because as Councilwoman Hertek mentioned, I am retiring in November. But I would anticipate that that would be the process going forward that each of the MPOs as it considers taking action on recommendations from the Tri-County Group, would be consulting with its member governments. Thank you very much. We, we have, to, yes, sir. I just wanna say one more thing, sorry. Um, when we talk about transportation in, in Tampa, a lot of people equate transportation with mass transit. And um, part of the reason why the last three initiatives have failed is because um, we don't have the planning overlay in our community um, to, uh, to enable transportation. So when folks put down a map and they say, here's where BRT or rail or something would go, um, they show dots of where the stations would be and then they talk about transitory and development and that's part of the justification for it. 
um, that is a way that some cities do it, but the other way is that you build <coughs> neighborhood commercial districts throughout your city and then you connect them with transportation. And that's what I think progressive cities do. We as a city council pushed the neighborhood commercial district idea three, three years ago. The city beta tested it in Palmasia and, and um, West Tampa, uh, but it hasn't gone forward since then. We need to figure out how to start that um, neighborhood commercial district plan going forward. Where would you put a train or bus station anyway? You're gonna put it out in the middle of a, in the middle of a neighborhood? There should be centers to neighborhoods. Transportation planners call them nodes instead of neighborhood commercial districts, but we need places that, that people naturally congregate. <laughs> and that my point is that we actually have control of that. I've spent long discussions, uh, time discussion with um, Nicole, some with Elise, Erica, and um, uh, Stephen Benson, we can we can take control of our plan in our city and we can build neighborhood commercial districts now. We don't have to wait for transit to get transit oriented development. We can build the nodes now and then everybody will understand why we need transit to connect those nodes. Thank you. Thank you very much. More? Yeah, just one last time, sorry. Okay. Uh, one, I, I uh, agree with, and I've been a long advocate for these uh, commercial districts, so I, I'll be on board and I'd like to breathe some more life into that, um, Councilman Carlson. Uh, just a point of privilege, I want to say I've only been on the TPO for a short period of time. Beth, I've appreciated working with you. For those folks that have not been familiar with the work uh, that Beth has done on the TPO, I think she's done an outstanding job. And most, most admirable is as she looks towards retirement. Her, her planning for secession has been amazing, and I think it's a leadership example that any organization or anybody that serves in an organization should follow. She's been very uh, a good steward of the organization and ensuring that that we continue to 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 have leadership that, and and follow in our footsteps. So thank you for that. It, it, someone you casually coming in at the last minute and seeing it and witnessing. I just want to let you know I recognize it and thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for your presentation. All right, Councilman Miranda, you had requested for the mayor's Hispanic uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'd like for the Hispanic uh, committee that uh, represent the city of Tampa to come forward. They're going to offer us an invitation for the 35th annual. Hispanic Thanks. Heritage Committee. Let me introduce her. Will you introduce yourself? Good morning. Buenos dias. My name is Melissa Martinez. I am the chair for the Mayor Hispanic Heritage Committee. Good morning. You want to come up? You want everybody to introduce themselves? Go right ahead. Um, my name is Alicia Ortiz, and I'm the treasurer of the Mayor Hispanic Heritage Committee. Good morning. Lydia Pizarro, Tampa Police member uh, over 20 years of the Mayor's Hispanic Heritage Committee. Good morning all. Jose A. Sanchez Sanchez, member, Hispanic Heritage Committee, also a wastewater engineer employee. Mariela Gomez, I'm also a member of the committee and I'm with uh, Mobility Stormwater. Good morning, Council. My name is Regina Castillo. I'm the Diversity Coordinator, and I'm a member as well. Good morning. My name is Jonathan Zelaya, a new member to the committee. Very honored to be here. Thank you all so much. Jonathan designed our poster and our invite this year. Let me see it. He's going to put it. <laughs> Very good. Hello, my name is Sandra Kiner. I am a member of the Mayo's Hispanic Heritage Committee, and I am also privileged to work in revenue and finance. Thank you. Hi, my name is Julio Barrera. I'm with Parks and Recreation and former chair of the Mayor's Hispanic Heritage Committee. Thank you, and I think uh, Marissa wants to make an invitation, Senora Martinez, for the council <laughs> on the 35th annual Hispanic uh, heritage. Committee heritage, heritage Celebration at the Tampa Theater. Yes. Good morning, and thank you uh, for giving us this brief time. I'll be brief. Um, so our committee is here today to invite you to our 35th annual Hispanic Heritage Celebration on September 27th at 11 in the morning. It's going to be held at the um, historic Tampa Theater. Our guest speaker this year is Adri Colina. She oh. is the City of Tampa Director of Logistic and Asset Management. Um, we have for the entertainment, Panama para el Mundo. Tampa Bay Flamenco Dance Company, and Tampa Gymnastic and Dance Show Stars. This event is free to the public. Um, our committee will be providing free lunches to the first 200 guests. Um, we want to thank 
Councilman Miranda for always being a supportive of our committee and, um, and for adding us really quick to this agenda meeting today. And we hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I will be making that uh, announcement today at the end of the meeting for the official on the uh, 35th annual celebration of Hispanic people that lived there for many, many years. Muchísimas gracias por todo, señora Martínez. Un placer estar con usted y con todo el mundo aquí. Gracias. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. We'll see you then. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, next up we have public comment. Um, if anybody is here and wishes to speak, do we have the registered speakers online? I know we had three, but one is in the audience. All right, let's go to the registered. It's just two people, Michael Randolph and then Jill Corcoran. Michael Randolph, if you're there, please unmute yourself. You have three minutes to speak. Uh, yes, my name is Michael Randolph, and I'm with the West Tampa uh, CDC. Uh, first off, I'm going to start off by giving, uh, taking my head up to the lady who spoke earlier about civil rights. Her and I said uh, two qualities. First, we believe in civil rights, and second, not our age. I'm 67, and I claim it 37, but I have a child the heart of a child, because I always believe in the possibility. I believe that economics leads to civil rights. That being said, here's what I'm going to talk about today, which is economic development. Reducing gentrification on purpose. We talked earlier about our most recent program, home-based commerce initiative, powered by artificial intelligence and I can tell you from artificial intelligence and GPT has taken my business to the next level. So this particular program is going to focus on a particular uh, who are left out of the narrative. Uh, what we plan to do is to monetize that talent, including who can they afford to eat below the moderate income, people with criminal records, uh, stigma, female head of household or man head of households, those struggling to pay their rent as well as the homeless. The fact is that less than 3% of African Americans own their own business. It's also true in West Tampa that 35 to 25% of people are unemployed. This program plans to birth the step. Our program consists of those who develop an extended professional business plan, a system in starting that business, and more importantly, connect them half the necessary to start that business. Not just to start a home for our business. The website we're going to put up is going to connect potential businesses, potential customers, related to our uh, increase in narrative. There's little to no money that needs to get started a, a home based business. The other thing we're doing is uh, we're providing professional grant writers, especially in those non-profits of West Tampa that are uh, struggling to make it. We're professional, uh, professional training so you can take it to the next level. I'm happy today because of the fact that people see people in terms of what they are and not in terms of what you might think. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to today. And today is my little cow heart saying that ending is in this pocket, even though it seems like Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Uh, our last registered speaker online is Joe Corcoran. If you're online, please unmute yourself. Then we'll go to the folks in the audience here. Yes, sir. I'm online. Can everyone hear me? Yes, ma'am. Please state your name. Go ahead. My name is Jill Corcoran. I live at 2913 West Santiago Street, which straddles the property 2915 West Santiago Street that is my daughter's Alexandria Quintero. And 